I'm back. We're we're here for another programming stream. It's been a while since I've done one of those. Uh, and let's see, what is today's date? It is January 28th of 2020. That is a Tuesday, which is not a usual day for my streaming. And it's been, oh boy, it's been almost, it's been more than a week since I streamed. I think my last stream was Monday of last week. Uh, well, my last programming stream. I think I did a Pokemon stream in between, but that doesn't count, does it? Um, but I, I took this weekend off because I was skiing in Salt Lake City, Utah. Well, yeah, Salt Lake City, Utah. That counts. That's that's a city, right? <laughs> but it was really fun. Um, did three days of skiing, hung out with some friends that I used to work with at Yelp, and drink a lot of beer. <laughs> and overall, it was just it was, it was a pretty good trip. I had a good time. Uh, what else happened? Not not much else has happened since then. Uh, I've gone running a couple times. I went climbing once yesterday, uh, which I hadn't done in like two weeks, so that was that was good. Uh, getting back into running though, so that's that's a thing. But yeah, uh, let's go over the open source stuff I did since last time. It's actually not that much, but it's been oh whatever uh, six or seven days since then. Wait a minute, why are these out of order? Oh. I know why they're out of order. Man, this one is really frustrating. Uh, so apparently Bash is broken in Azure Pipelines and Windows right now, which is super awesome. Uh, so I just factored out some some more of the Bash in pre-commit. This, this line was apparently enough to make the four tests that were failing start passing again. Yep, still alive and breathing, chaps to the max. I'm, I'm uh, not dead. But yeah, I had to, had to fix this. Um, I opened a... I was super salty about this. Maybe too salty, but I opened a like GitHub issue about this, and then like no one was replying. So I went to Twitter and I was like, "Azure pipelines, what the fuck? <laughs> Fix my shit, please." Yeah, so I made this GitHub issue with like a full reproduction, like very very small script. It's just like make a git hook, run git commit, and it crashes with this like Sigwin DLL offset something blah 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 error like very very uh very straightforward reproduction but i, I like what the fuck guys <laughs> fix this and they're like oh thanks for flagging make sure to, to do it uh or make sure to post on online and I, I post on this on their forums i was like here's a full reproduction blah blah, blah. and the Microsoft representative, I'll, I'll give you the TLDR, she's basically like, run a self-hosted agent so you don't have this problem. And I'm like, this is a regression in the hosted agent that is not a fix. Ugh. I was, I was pretty mad about that, but anyway. I fixed pre-commit so it doesn't actually affect me, but uh, yeah, so that's what that's about. Uh, I refactored some of the internals of pre-commit this was necessary for dropping Python 2 support. Uh, I had to move some stuff around so that uh, it continued to work on Mac OS, which doesn't ship with Python 3 and like, has like, I mean, usually you install Python 3 through like brew or the official installers and then you don't have to worry about it. But uh, there's some, some complicated interaction between brew and Python on Mac OS that requires me to move a lot of the code around. And also this is a good chance for me to take some of the, so like, let's see if we can show it. Git hooks pre-commit, that's the after. Okay, so this is what's currently inside the GitHub script, which is a whole bunch of complexity, a bunch of if statements, a bunch of functions, a bunch of sub process, a bunch of, bunch of things. And I can't really, well, I do test this, but I can't really prove that I test it because you can't really, uh, you can enable coverage on this file, but it's not easy to associate it with the right source file. So anyway, this is this is the old script. Uh, it has like has all this code. Uh, the new script is much simpler and moves all of that logic into. Well, there's still some logic, <laughs> but it's a lot shorter now. It's you know 45 lines instead of a lot a lot more before. Uh, but it moves almost all of the logic into 
this new command, which is uh, hook impl. And this, this has the actual implementation of the various different hook types and basically just passes along the original Python, the hook implementation with the configuration file, the hook type, and the hook dir so that it knows where to get the legacy ones. Uh, are you going to use macOS in a VM? I've done that before, but it, holy good god, is a lot of pain in the ass. And technically it's illegal, so uh, what I've done instead is I've purchased... I purchased a very cheap Mac Mini that sits in my living room, uh, and so this is my uh, this is my Mac that sits in my. Um, so that's that's my Mac OS build machine, <laughs> which I hate owning an Apple product, but I kind of I kind of need it in order to get my stuff done. Hey, Psycode says, "Yo, it's my number one Python boy. What's up? How's it going, Psycode? It's going well for me." I'm, uh, I'm excited to be back streaming. I'm a little bit tired, which I feel like I say that every time I stream, but yeah, I woke up a little bit early today to go running, and I was super tired of my run for some reason. I don't, I don't really know why. I think I said I like, drank and stayed up too late last night. That's what I'm blaming on. It's gonna be my fault. An out of ideas and bored. Mm. Well, my problem is I have too many ideas and I can never finish them all, or I can never get to all of them. But we're gonna try and get to some of them today. Uh, let's see, these three PRs are all relate, somewhat related in Pi Upgrade. Uh, these first two are just like quality of life ones. It makes it so that some of the uh, some of the source gets rewritten in a single pass instead of two passes. So before this would turn into stir here, and then stir of this would turn into this. So you'd have to run Pi Upgrade twice in order to do this refactor. Uh, but I moved some code around and uh, that made it do it in one pass. Uh, similar idea with this one, um, if you wrote this, no, no, no. if you wrote this code here, the first pass it would do is uh, put object in the front and do meta class equals M, and then the second pass it would remove object of the base class. Um, so I just made it resolve it in one. And this one, uh, this one was a dumb, dumb bug. <laughs> I spent all this like clever like logic here to like build up this previous tuple so that like these accumulate as you go down the versions. But then I just never used this variable. We just added to it but never referenced it. I'm a little surprised that uh Pyflakes didn't notice this because it's only appended to and never read from. So I'll have to think about this and whether this is like actually something Pyflex should have noticed or not. Technically, this is a read and a write, but yeah, I don't know. I'll have to think about that one more and maybe I'll set up something for Pyflex. But anyway, the fix is super easy. You just like change names to previous, which is what it was supposed to be before. Uh, I dislike GitHub because I'm lazy and GitHub isn't lazy. Hmm. I feel like GitHub is pretty lazy. Server side, server stuff hurts my brain, but I want to learn it. I feel like server stuff is, I don't know, for me it's more straightforward than like client side stuff, but I don't know. Hey, what's up Mindful Fox? Hello, hello. How's it going? Going over my pull requests and then we're gonna make new pre-commit release, uh, which will finally be the one that drops Python 2. Yay. <laughs> about lots of hello world projects in different languages i find that that's kind of useful to like learn a bunch of stuff like i had a lot of fun with advent of code uh well i haven't finished it yet but maybe eventually how do i become a staff anthony <laughs> you just become a very very long stick and then you'll be a staff <laughs> uh... <laughs> but let's see yeah, like I, I learned a bunch, or I played with a bunch of different programs. I mean, a lot of these I already knew, but like playing with Perl was interesting. Nim was interesting. Lua was kind of fun. PowerShell was a uh, pain, but I learned a lot. Uh, Crystal was cool. I think this is probably the one that I enjoyed the most out of all of these. Although the Python Zero one was, was pretty fun. <laughs> the, the staff joke. <laughs> so. The only reason that that joke was was so off the cuff is uh, let's see if I can find her. Um, there's 
uh, person at Lyft who um, set her Slack status to, see if I can find it. Uh, I guess she says a lot of stuff. Come on, where is it? Anyway, I'll just, I, I remember it from memory, but uh, she, she shut her, she set her Slack status to uh, stick engineer. And someone was like, why would you be a stick engineer? Um, because it's a little staff. <laughs> uh, what's the plural of staff? Uh, staffs? Think. Oh, they've stopped doing dictionary at reference.com, huh? Plural staffs for one through five. Wait, what? <laughs> what? Wait. My brain hurts. What is going on here? <laughs> staffs for one through five and nine, or staves. Or staffs through 6 through 8, 10, and 11. Oh, wait, no, no. What? <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> okay, I'm not going to think about that. Apparently, there's two different pluralizations of staff, and you're supposed to use them for a different number of numbers, which uh, reminds me of the, like, Polish plural forums rules, which, holy dear god, are they complicated. Where's the Polish grammar? Uh, where's their plural rules? I swear it was Polish. Anyway, they have like some like modular modular arithmetic based uh, plural rules, which like. Oh wait, how do you, uh, where do I look that up? Get text, maybe? No, it'd be in a PO file. Anyway, the plural forms for Polish are complicated, if I remember it. Anyway, fix that. <clears throat> hey, what's up, best friends? It's staves. A bunch of tall sticks are staves. <laughs> sure people aren't staffed, they're staves. Uh, the worst documentation, right? I think the numbers are referring to the definition number. Oh, I see. That would make sense. That makes sense. Yes, and Psycut has figured out how to trigger the, the thunking of a bot. I guess we can put this up while I'm uh, rolling through PRs. Okay, cool. So, did some pie upgrade fixes, including the really dumb one. Uh, I added GitHub Actions to MyPy because they wanted, they're like, hey, we want to speed up our CI. And I was like, well, I know how to do that. He's a peasy. But I, I updated their, their CI, so now they're using GitHub Actions, which is pretty cool. Uh, added Markdown Lint, which they added the pre-commit metadata directly to their repo, and I didn't even have to bug them, which was pretty cool. And then a little fix in pre-commit this morning, which... I, it didn't actually fix their problem, so I'm not sure if I want to keep it or not, but whatever. It doesn't actually hurt anything. Basically, their their uh, work has this set for some reason, and so it's really hard to use pre-commit with this value set. Um, which is kind of by design, because this is a whole bunch of messy mess, but... Yeah, yeah it doesn't say thunk. <laughs> thunk. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Cool. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the stuff that I did offline. Uh, today, we're going to be releasing uh, pre-commit. Uh, before that, I wanted to show... So we were... Well, I think the last time I was writing code, uh, we were working on this highlight demo, which I haven't done any work on it yet, or since then. But I did do some research. Uh, so we were working with this theme last time. Uh, and this is the highlighting that I got out of it. And when I looked at it, I was like, this is, this seems wrong. Like, why is this one blue, but not this one? Like, and I, I spent probably six or eight hours just like stepping through, 
through this and, and like reading the Visual Studio source code and like trying to figure out like, what the fuck, why is this not being highlighted? Then it turns out, yes, <laughs> uh, error code patch. It turns out that VS Code highlights this identically. Uh, not in this theme, let me switch themes. Uh, what theme is this? That looks broken. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember how to themes. Let's see, file. Oh, also there's this like weird white box that happens in VS Code. I don't know what that's about. I'm just gonna blame it on Electron one way or another. But uh, let's see, edit, file, preferences. Color theme. Uh, what the fuck? Where's the one that I had before? Oh, maybe I have to install it. Install additional color themes. Uh, one dark pro. Here's the button. Where's the install button? Oh, there it is. Right there. Little, little tiny green thing. Better idea, write your own operating system. <laughs> Anthos. Anthos, yeah, that would be, uh... Okay, yeah, so here's, here's side by side with how VS Code highlights this, so... This was technically correct, which, uh, is the best kind of correct. Um, so I'm, I'm, I was actually pretty happy once I figured out, like, oh, duh, I, I should've just compared against VS Code. Uh, I think I can fix this theme because uh, the theme's open source, so I can probably commit to the theme and actually like make these highlighted the same. Unless this is intentional, but it doesn't seem intentional. It seems like an oversight to me, but whatever. So good news, that actually works. <laughs> but we're, we're not going to work on that just yet. We're going to do this release first. Because <laughs> it's GNU slash Anthos. <laughs> uh, why do you use the terrible operating system? It's fine. Hey, what's up, Batiska? Hello, hello. Welcome back. <clears throat> and yeah, so basically what I do to make a release, uh, let me make sure we're up to date. Uh, the first thing is to make the change log and we get to go to this very, very awesome, uh, if I can remember the date, I think it's the 28th, is that right? 28th, yes. Um, so I usually make the change log to go first. The Batiska says, have you seen virtualenv 20.0? And what do you think of it? Yeah, I've been involved in a lot of the design process. I chat with uh, Renette uh, a lot. Unfortunately, it's like super broken for me and like doesn't work for pre-commit. So I opened a bunch of issues and hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to help work on them and or, or Gabriel will just fix them for me. Uh, but yeah, I have like some nice reproducible issues here. So like, here's one which causes this wacky backtrace failed to find interpreter for built-in discover a Python spec. Uh, still reproduces in verbose mode. Yeah, so that was a problem. This one just breaks on everything that I try it with. So this is, I, I actually couldn't get it to work for me, which is kind of sad. Um, but yeah, it, it ends up crashing with this like really, really long error message. EPython 3, in all caps. I'm surprised it didn't find this executable because uh, that one actually exists. But holy dear God, does it try a lot of different things. But anyway. Uh, it was broken for me, but I'm looking forward to it because it does it does a bunch of stuff that will make virtual and creation way faster, uh, which I think everyone always has wanted and will want to see stuff again, or will want to see stuff like that in the future. Um, and it, it's so much faster. Uh, it does cheat a little bit, which I think is interesting, but also like useful. Uh, so it plays a bunch of games with symlinks to make. Because mo most of the slowness of virtualenv installation is installing pip into the virtualenv. Uh, and new virtualenv kind of bypasses that by just symlinking pip in. Which is pretty sweet. I'm happy with that. 
but I also found this bug where virtual env in parallel causes this error in a logging message, which is, oh, is there a spider on my wall? Is there really? No, there's not. You're a liar. There's a spider in my hallway, but he's just chilling. So I let him, I let him stay there. There's no spider in my room that I know of. Messing with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no spider. But yeah, I'm really excited for the Virtual M20 stuff. I think it's going to be pretty uh, pretty good. Does it pay rent? Oh man, that would be that'd be great. I could sublet from a spider. Oh, that's going to bother me that these are different length. Oh well, it's fine. Features, fixes, and then there's... Uh, what's the other one that I usually do? Is it called updating? For yeah, for breaking changes. So this is the actual, the actual first breaking release of pre-commit, which um, the updating below is more like deprecated stuff that you need to fix. But this time it will be actual breakages. And I usually don't have people write out their own change logs. I usually just end up doing the change logs at the end myself. Um, this pull, this release should actually be pretty simple or pretty straightforward because I haven't done much since the beginning of the month, uh, other than some removals. <laughs> this is, <laughs> oh, this is funny. <laughs> oh wait, that's not what I want. Uh... Git log dash p change log. <laughs> what year is it? <laughs> It's it's so on brand that the second day of the year I messed up the year. <clears throat> Psycho says next stream stream on Windows. Lol. I, I mean I'm already running Windows, but you mean like do development on Windows? That'd be uh, that'd be pretty wild. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be that would be next level. I, I I would I would give that to you. Mood PC RE language use pygrep instead. Uh, one two six eight PR by me. Uh, removed tags only argument to pre-commit auto update. It did nothing. Uh, that's not entirely true. It did nothing s after this. It has done nothing since that version. And that was in pillar class one, two, uh, six, nine. <laughs> <clears throat> hello stream. Hey, what's up, Nat Cleric? Hello, hello. Uh, do I put two line breaks here or one line break? One line break. Okay, so, uh, dropped Python 2 and Python 3.5 support. Uh, yeah. It's fine. This is a bunch of pull requests that involve this. Actually, I need to do these ones first. What was 1275? Issue 1275. That's weird. That that link used to work. I must did I type out issue? Huh. Weird. It used to be that issues and pull requests were actually the same, uh, the same type, and so it would redirect the other one. And the Vox asks, "How was shredding the slopes?" It was a lot of fun. <laughs> I, I really love skiing. Uh, it was it was a good uh, it was a good three days of skiing. It was pretty exhausting, but got in as many runs as I as I could. It was good. I really want to go back. I wanted. Honestly, the place we stayed in the second night, uh, it was on the market for like 1.3 million, which was like way too expensive. Um, but we we're like, we were we were seriously considering like, what if we split it and just bought the house 
and then just lived in Utah and worked remote. I think that's the dream. I think I think that's that's now like stuck in my head and like something that I want to do. Unfortunately. <clears throat> Mind the box says, when are we gonna see you in the X Games? Oof. I'm uh I don't do tricks and stuff. I, I used to race, so maybe I'll be in like a race or something, but I don't think I'll be in the X Games. Hey, Catherine, welcome back. Forgot you were going skiing, missed your stream. Yeah, uh, I was <laughs> I was a little sad that I couldn't stream, but it's fine. Skiing was uh, skiing was good too. Uh, before I do this, let's see. Misc. I'll, I'll I'll reward this guy for fixing my change log. Uh, fix uh, change log date. Before 1.21.0. Uh, was it 1275? PR by this dude. Or chick, I don't know. <laughs> uh, is that endgame, right? <laughs> We've now entered the endgame. 1.3 million is how much a condo costs here. Yeah, it's so fucking expensive. Wow, this guy put an Octothorpe in his branch name. That's that's uh that's impressive. Uh living dangerous. Who is this? One, two, seven, seven. Fix prog arg to return the correct version. Oh yeah. Super minor. I don't know how someone noticed this, but also decided it was worth fixing. This guy fixed it. It was someone else who uh Oh, of course, Soren. Of course, yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, first, first contributions. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Fixes, fix. Um, Python dash um pre commit dash to uh fix this to mention pre commit instead of main.py boop this was 1273 issue by copy paste his name and then 1276 PR by this person sweet copy that right yeah it looks good Okay, and then these are Python, Py, like Python 2 fixes. <clears throat> My code says, what is the max length a file extension name can have? Uh, let's see, how would I do this? Uh, There's foo dot a hundred days. <laughs> I think we go a lot bigger. Oh, file name too long. What is this? Windows? A thousand and four. Oh yeah, that was exactly wait. Seems shorter than I would expect. Uh, let's try 500. No, oh, even that's too long. It's probably 255 then. Yeah, it looks like a file name can only be 255 characters, so uh, you could have a nameless only extension file that's 254 characters long. Oh. Oh, thank you, Justin, from from far. <laughs> good catch, good catch. See, this is what chat's for. I was fixing my uh, my changelog links. But I always mess them up, too. That's the other problem. Uh, yeah, it looks like 254 is the 
at least in this version of Linux. Uh, it's unclear if that's always the case. Okay, 7.7, 7, which is where I drop Python 2 for the first one. Remove Python 2, Python 3.5 support. Lots of PRs to do this one. Twelve eighty one. Same deal here. Twelve eighty one. Next one. Twelve eighty two. More miscellaneous cleanup. Now this is more typing in Python 3 stuff. Cool. 1282. 1287. This is more typing fixes, if I remember right. I moved a class around. That can count as well. 1287, 1289, what is that one? Use a more specific hook shebang now that it can't be Python 2. Oh yeah, this was more, more fixes for Python 3 stuff. It took a lot to get this quite right. 1288. Oh, this is a new feature. This one is kind of nifty. It exposes the uh, remote name and remote URL when you run a pre-push hook as environment variables. Features, expose, pre-commit, uh, push, wait. Pre-commit repo name. Wait. <laughs> remote name. Remote name and pre commit remote URL as environment variables during pre push hooks. Uh, I want to say both the issue and the fix were by this guy, the girl, or person. Not what I want to do. I wanted to click on this one. <clears throat> That number is 1274. And then their pull request. 1288. Cool. This one. I'm trying to learn a little bit of different languages. I already learned a little bit of C Sharp, C, JavaScript, TypeScript, Java, Lua, PHP, and Python. Nice. That's quite a quite a few uh, languages there. I'm going to skip this one since it's not that interesting. Um, and I hate when people use master and I have no recollection of what they actually did. 1293. Ah, uh, yes. This is a weird one. Very, very weird. Very, very weird one. Um, let's see. Don't filter from environment when cloning. And that was 1293. Okay. This person. Um, this one was another Python 3 one. <laughs> A lot of patches to get there. Uh, the pre-commit still supports running Python uh, hooks written in Python 2, but pre-commit itself requires Python 3.6+. 
Uh, that one did actually have an issue associated with it, but I didn't link it. So let me fix that. 1260. <clears throat> Look at all these channel points. Where do you get all these channel points from? I could. Seems like you always have a million of them. Uh, and then this is the last one, 1299. Allow init template dirt to succeed when core dot hooks path is set. Someone made this issue because it's morning, 1298. Name. Actually, only 880. That's still a lot of channel points, right? The highlight only costs what, 100. Cool. And I think that's it for the change log. Um, So this was 121. I update the change log. We have to update setup.cfg. The big 200. Let me read through this, make sure I didn't do anything too derpy here. The 200, 2020 01, 28 features expose pre commit home, pre commit remote name, and pre commit remote URL as environment variables during pre push hooks. Oh, cool. Fix Python dash and pre commit dash version to mention pre commit instead of main.py. Cool. Don't filter get SSL no verify from environment during cloning. Sounds scary, but it's fine. Allow pre commit in init template dir. Is that what it's called? Init template dir. Yes. To succeed even if core dot hooks path is set. Uh, fix changelog date for that. Did I do the changelog date correctly? It is indeed the 28th. Cool. Remove PCRE, use PyGrab instead. Remove tags only argument to pre commit auto update is done. Nothing since then. Remove Python 2 slash Python 3.5 support. Note that pre commit still supports running hooks written in Python 2, but pre commit itself requires Python 3.6. Cool. I think we're good. I think we're ready. <laughs> Gotta spend the points, yeah. <laughs> uh, then I do a commit v2.0.0. We tag that and then we make a source distribution and a wheel. Hey, what's up, Bula Kanadil? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. And then we upload it to PyPI and uh, all that done. Matt didn't mute. You sneaky microphone. And we're back. Hit push origin head tags. Sweet. Hello world and Ruby done. Yeah, it's just like Ruby puts hello world. Yay, we did it. Look, I'm a Ruby master now. Uh, close this issue. Via that. Sweet! pre commit 2! We did it. I did it, Mom. We did it. Wait, does someone just open a pull request? No, okay. Like, why do I have a notification? What are you? Oh, it's meat service. I don't need you, meta service. Okay, cool. So, and then there's one other thing that I do as part of releasing, which is to make release notes. Uh, here. Two, zero, zero, pre-commit v2.0.0. Then grab the changelog contents and paste them in there. And then 
it nicely links all these, which is pretty cool. It doesn't do that from the markdown, which is a little bit annoying, but eh, whatever. I can't be bothered. This is good enough. And then we publish. Hello word in Elixir. I don't actually know Elixir. A bunch of people have told me that it's really good, but I just haven't had time to learn it. Back in the... Yeah, that's Pregment 2. Uh, one thing that I also want to do as part of Pregment 2 is to remove all of the change law, or all of the, uh... Yes, I definitely meant to Google Pregment.com. That is totally what I meant to Google. Does Pregment show up first if I do this? Hell yeah. Look at this pesky NPM project way down here. We're so much better than that. <laughs> Woohoo! Right, Catherine? I did it! Um... Yeah, but I want to go through and remove all these, like, new in zero dot somethings. Because uh, it's been so long since the zero version. <laughs> new in zero dot six dot six. Like, yeah, cool. I don't think anyone actually cares about that. I'm going to keep the new in one dot x ones, but it's been, let's see, how long since then? Oh, I also have to remove pie grab. Uh, yeah, let me look when one dot zero dot zero was released. Log. 1.0.0 September of 2017 Recommit will now be following December <clears throat> Yeah I was not <laughs> I was not very good about change logs before then This is when I started actually doing proper change logs uh, before that, it was just like one line, no crediting people, uh, which I thought was bad. So I, I switched to this forum where like I call out the people that contribute the patches, although it ends up being just me most of the time. But it's nice when you can uh, call out other people that, that do good work. So that's why I think this forum is a lot better than the, the previous forum. Anyway, let me do that. Fix to the docks. Two zero zero. Uh, damn it. This this repository has weird workflow. Uh, so you actually have to check out from real master and not master. So we can get rid of PCRE. Think of all those mentions there. Additional dependencies, that's such an old feature. It's actually a real like I think one of the most important features that I originally was like never going to add. I was like really against it. And then oh maybe that wasn't the one that I was really against. I think I was really against local hooks, but they ended up being like super useful. So I'm kinda glad I added them. But at the time I was like, oh this is a bad idea. O12O, oh, the file is called hooks.yaml. Do I mention pre-commit hooks.yaml somewhere? Unfair. New in this version. When hooks fail. Zero three five. That's a real old uh, version there. 
Invite can be used to manage commit message hooks. Thirteen, yeah. Local hooks can use any language which supports additional dependencies or these ones. That looks good. Uh, that's not mentioned at all, so I think we're good. Uh, Psycho says, I'm honestly thinking of learning Ruby. I would suggest learning Crystal. <laughs> You'll also know Ruby if you learn Crystal. Uh, but it's kind of, it's it's really cool because it's compiled uh, and like type checked and stuff. And it's, it seemed pretty fast when I was using it. Uh, I'm just going to change these to 3.7. Is there any other mentions of Python 2? Uh, seems not. Oh, this error message changed at some point. Should probably update this. See if we can do that. Which repo was I using here? Yeah. <laughs> Don't know Crystal for Windows. Ah, oh, bummer. Are you seriously paying $5 to have your bot use your emotes? Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. This command not found, but S command found, but not installed in testin. Oh, this has changed a lot since then. What do you mean not installed in testin? What do you mean? Oh. Does that not work? Does that not work? <laughs> uh... Anyway, this is the new error message here. We'll get rid of this line. <clears throat> There's some way to compile it for Windows. Oh. Ultimate showdown of ultimate testing. Yeah, it's a it's a good one. Necklark says, just wondering how do version numbers work? Like for example, when did you decide pre-commit 2.0.0 instead of 1. whatever? Uh so I'm following well, I'm trying to follow what's called semantic versioning. Uh this is the TLDR for semantic versioning. The first number is major, middle is minor, and the last is patch. Major is when you make API incompatible changes. So there's three incompatible changes in pre-commit two. There's, I got rid of PCRE. Uh, I got rid of tags only, which was an option that didn't do anything for a long time. And I dropped Python 2 and Python 3.5 support. So that was that, those were the incompatible changes. Uh, a minor version is when you add features um, and a patch is when you fix a bug and only fix bugs or do things that are irrelevant to the execution. Uh, so that's semantic version. That's one popular type of versioning. Uh, another one that's popular is Calver. I think is stupid, but that's just me. Calendar versioning uses the date that it's released as the version number. So it gives no guarantees about when, uh, when breaking changes happen. So you, you basically have to read the change log every single time. 
And some popular projects that use calendar versioning are pip, um, pipi.org slash p slash pip, uh, which is why the latest version of pip is 20 dot something. Uh, another project that uses calendar versioning is Black. They released in the 10th month of 2019. That was their previous release. Um, what else uses it? I think Virtualenv is switching to calendar versioning, although this is prior to calendar versioning. Uh, this was semantic versioning before that. But now, if we look at their beta release, their first beta release is 20, so they're they're using calendar versioning there. Um, but yeah, so that's calendar versioning. And then there's a meme versioning, which is called zero, zero version, uh, <laughs> which is, haha, we're never going to become 1.0. We're just going to use garbage versions like this. This this is entirely a joke based on the Semver project. But yeah, there's some uh, pretty amazing zero version projects like this one. That's zero dot all these number of nines. This is because they never wanted to be at 1.0 due to reasons. Uh, although I think they finally did escape Zerover and are finally on 1.0. Go away, meat service. Um, yeah, so those are, the, those are the like three most popular ones. I don't have very much left of my code that's zero version. Let's see, version. I think this will find all of them. I need to put quotes, because that's how terminals work. Uh, more than I expected. Let's see. Oh yeah, I never finished this project. I never finished this project. Babby, we're working on... This I should... I should positive version this, because it just works. This one... I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with this project. I think I only versioned it so I could put it on PyPI. This one I can probably 1.0. This one I never released. This I should 1.0. This I should 1.0. This I should 1.0. This I never finished. This I can probably 1.0 at this point. But, but I still have some zero verse stuff, which uh, I guess, guess that makes me a hypocrite and guilty. But what are you gonna do? All right, let me... I'm not going to read through the docs. It takes too long. We're just going to call that good enough. Uh, oh, we want to mention any of the changes. What else do we change? Let's see. We updated version. We updated that. Oh, I should mention this. Bring my drink push. Yeah. During during a push, Freakment will export the following environment variables. Figment remote name. Which remote is being pushed to? For example, origin. There's actually two other environment variables that I should mention as well. Pre-commit remote URL. The URL of the remote that is being pushed to. For example, for example, that. What are the other variables? Pre-commit origin and pre-commit source. Pre-commit origin. Uh, I can never remember which one is which. Uh, let me read the docs. I should really know, right? Uh, source to origin. Pre-commit source. The git revision that is being uh, the remote is being pushed to 
the local revision that is being pushed to the remote. I think that's right, because source to origin. Hopefully that's right. Oh, and I should put new in. New in 2.0.0. Look at that big number. <clears throat> okay, Ruby is si really simple. <laughs> yeah, Ruby is kind of simple. Uh, but it's also... I mean, in some ways it's simple. In other ways, it's hilariously complicated. But... Yeah, let's see. Update documentation for 2.0.0. Are you reinstalling a CSS link? Eh. Probably fine. <laughs> of course, we pasted trailing white space. <clears throat> yep, you're right, site code. That's, uh, that's how semantic versioning works. Cool, so then we'll get to actually work on interesting stuff, which will be syntax highlighting. So I'll talk, we'll, we'll go through some docs and talk about some of the stuff that I learned for uh, syntax highlighting, and then we'll make sure you're fine. Bye bye, PCRE, you lived a good life. I hope I didn't break Sigwin, I didn't actually test it. Actually, how different is this error message? Oh yeah, we get rid of this cloning into because that's been gone for a while. This is the same. And is simpler. Oh, but it doesn't include the repo name anymore, which is interesting. Oh, it does up here, okay. We good. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. <clears throat> uh, sure why. Probably best to have the error as per a patch. Ah, oh well. <laughs> Oh well, can't win them all. <laughs> that was the uh, the weird hooks path problem thing. Uh... <laughs> Man, this is a really annoying recruiting email. The title, oh, you can't see it, but uh, the title is "Re Quick Question for Anthony." Sneaky, sneaky, trying, trying to get me. They got me to open it, so I guess they succeeded, but like, oh, this is so scummy. Okay, we'll let this build, and while that's building, oh, it's already done, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, that, that finishes up that release. So now we can do syntax editing. So we're gonna actually switch gears a little bit and pick Placing terrors as I get those kind of emails all the time. Yeah, they're getting, I don't know, recruiters are pretty clever about getting you to open stuff, which is, it makes sense. That's kind of their job, but pretty annoying, you know? Let me upgrade my version of preprint so that we're always using the new version. Go from 121 to 2.
still works, which is good. Sure, I hope it still works because I didn't. <laughs> well, I did rewrite like the, the whole thing to add types, but uh, let's see. Python highlight demo themes. Okay, so we're going to be trying to get the Visual Studio theme to work today because it's a little bit more complicated. And I've learned a bunch of new stuff about how themes work, uh, which should change stuff a little bit. Languages diff, but if we do this right now, you'll see that this doesn't get highlighted properly. Like this should have colors or whatever. And if we open up VS Code, patch .diff. oh, we're in the wrong directory. Add a path, see code patch diff. We'll have to change the theme to the other theme. Edit. Where is it? File. Oh, file preferences. Color theme. Park Visual Studio. Yeah. So this is what it should look like, but this is what it looks like. So we're we're missing all the highlighting here. I know why we're missing all the highlighting. We're missing all the highlighting. I know why we're missing all the highlighting. Um, it's because I didn't actually implement the proper highlighting engine, but we're gonna be doing that today. Um, but first, let's look at the rules and I'll explain how I'm gonna try and approach this. TextMate, uh, is it this one? Scope selectors, this is the one that matters. Okay, so. The way TextMate highlighting works is it's composed of two parts. One of them is the theme. If we look at Dark VS, uh, the theme, and this is how Visual Studio does it a little bit differently. There's a uh, there's a colors list which includes like all of the UI elements in Visual Studio Code. So like these these are the ones that these are the only ones we care about. Uh, you can also have just bare background and bare foreground in here, and those should be preferred over your editor or something like that. I don't remember quite how it works, but we, we looked at that earlier with different themes, and some of them have this, some of them don't. And then they have this token colors list, and this is basically a CSS style sheet, except in a special JSON format. And the way it works is there's either a there's there's a scope section which has either a list of selectors, which this one has, or do they have any of the string ones in this one. Yeah, so then you can also have string ones like this, which is just like a single scope. And do they have any string with comma ones? No. But this other theme does. Themes one dark pro. Yeah, so this one has that. So you can see there's a quote here and then a comma. They have a trailing comma, which is technically a bug in their theme. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Because you can have a scope that's the empty string. This comma feels like a bug. I wonder how it gets interpreted. Huh. Because what you're supposed to end up doing is you're supposed to split these selectors and then like each of these are the different options. So this is similar to the list, but they didn't do it as a list for some reason. Who knows why? But anyway, so this theme has a bunch of selectors and the selectors have uh, formatting associated with them. So in this case, the storage.modifier.import.java should make the foreground this color. Uh, this.self should be, or sorry, variable.language should be this color. <laughs> make your own special format so people are forced to use your theme. <laughs> yeah, so these are very, very close to being the same format as TextMate, but Visual Studio has their own little special twist on them. And unfortunately, they actually lose some of the information, which I think is really important. Um, so, so like, uh, let's see. Magic, Python, TM, language. Actually, let's just look at the diff, since that's the one we already have open. 
That's the JSON. This is the one that I want. So in the Visual Studio Code one, there's no there's no file types. So like these are the extensions that Sublime knows to match here. This is Sublime, for instance. Uh, but they, com they come from TextMate, so it's basically the same thing. Uh, Visual Studio just drops those, so I don't actually know how Visual Studio does its file matching. Maybe through some other way. Uh, and it also it has this like first line match stuff too, so that if you have an extensionless file, you can match based on these first line, the, the first line of the file. And so like, for instance, in my, my patch here, I don't, know, I don't know if it would match that. It would not match that, but. Huh, interesting. I would have thought it would have, uh, maybe it assumes that this would be the first, one, but that's fine. Anyway, but th this allows you to match more things, but neither of these things are included in the Visual Studio Code stuff. Uh, neither are the folding stuff, but there's, that's fine. Like, I'm not actually gonna implement folding, so it doesn't matter. <clears throat> yeah, I'm planning to use someone else's theme format just so they, uh, just so I can reuse other stuff, honestly. But yeah, and the way themes are, or the way languages are set up is there's a bunch of these um, regexes and they can be nested and you can see like, this one doesn't actually do any nesting if I remember right, which is why I picked it, because <laughs> it's the simplest one. Um, but if we look at the, I think it's called Magic Python, yeah, the Magic Python one, it gets pretty gnarly at some points. You can see like, some of the stuff gets like super nested in here. Oh, what was this one? <laughs> Support.function.builtin.python. Awesome, cool. So this is actually something that I wanted to highlight in my in my theme, because I currently do this in, in nano. I would want this for Babby. Although they're missing some of them, I think. Uh, NanoRC Python. Oh, well, maybe they have them all. Let's add this out and see what happens. No, I definitely have more than they do. So many more than they do. Why are they missing so many? That's annoying. They have double under import, which I don't have. Let's see, abs, all, any, ascii, bin, bool, missing bool, breakpoint, callable, they're missing byte array, bytes, oh, they're missing all the types, interesting, error, they're missing class method also, oh, huh. they have copyright, which is technically not a built-in, oh, wait, no, yeah, it is, I have it over here, they're missing complex, that's a type, I guess. Credits, del adder. They don't have dict. Third, div mod, enumerate, eval, exec, exit. Filter, format. Missing float. Again, probably because it's a type. They're missing frozen set. Get adder, globals, has adder, hash, help. X, ID, input. First, they're missing int. Instance is subclass. Iter, len, license, they don't have list, locals, map, max, they don't have, they do have memory view, what the fuck? Why do they have memory view but not stir, or not float? Memory view is a type. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Uh, min, next, oct, they don't have object, open, Board, pow, print, quit. Oh, they don't have, qu I don't have quit. Oh yeah, I do have quit. They don't have property. They have range, that's a, that's a type also. <laughs> oh, they don't have, oh, they do have wrapper. Wait, they have reload? That's not a built-in anymore. This is only a built-in in Python 2. Hmm. Wrapper reversed round, that, that's a type, set adder. 
splice, that's also type sorted. Static method they leave out for some reason, they left out stir. Some, they left out super. Huh. Interesting. And they left out tuple and type. Eh, whatever. Anyway, it's complicated. I got distracted. Let me, <laughs> let me get undistracted now. Uh, Skeptical says, how long ago did you graduate? Did you struggle in college? Uh, I graduated in 2013 from the University of Michigan, and I very much did not struggle in college. <laughs> I was I was good at school. Um, yeah. Uh, and it wasn't much because I studied, it was mostly just because uh, I was good at the material. Which is a little unfair, but that's the way things go. But anyway, so we're going to be implementing a selector engine, which is going to look a lot like a CSS engine, uh, which I have no experience in it. In so we're gonna we're gonna be building some stuff from scratch today. It's going to be a little bit a little bit tricky, but I hope it goes well. Um, basically, there's there's a couple of things that we need to handle here, uh, and the Visual Studio again has some extensions to these rules, so we're gonna have to implement some more complicated stuff after that. Uh, but a selector can be a dotted name and it matches prefixes. So and I also know that Visual Studio has a star a star selector, which, which uh, allows you to do prefixes and suffixes, but that's a whole different thing. I don't quite know. And there's no specification for that. So there's no, I'm not sure how it's supposed to be precedenced or not. So we'll have to play with that a little bit. Uh, but basically, if you have like, if you specify string, that'll match string .double .c. It'll also match string .single .whatever. Um, so we need to be able to match both exact names as well as dotted prefixes of those. Uh, we need to be able to handle descendants. And the way CSS does descend descendants is it checks the bottommost element and then looks upwards. This is because it's more efficient than doing the top one and looking downwards. Uh, and TextMate actually specifies that that's how you're supposed to do it because of the way their precedence rules work. And so um, we'll have to do that. So it's kind of bottom up. And let's see, excluding elements. Uh, oh yeah, there's a minus selector, which we'll have to support as well. Not quite sure how that's gonna work. There's grouping with commas. We're just going to split on comma. Uh, we do have to look out for that one case because uh, there is actually an empty string selector and it makes things do different things. We'll have to, we'll have to look at that. Uh, ranking matches. Okay, yeah. So the, the basic rule for ranking is the... Uh, if you have an exact match, that wins. Otherwise, the longest prefix wins. And... Uh, what's the element deepest down in the scope? Oh, right. So you could match something that's partially through a scope. Oh, that's so obnoxious. <laughs> match the element deepest in the scope. So string wins over source.php when the scope is source.php string.quoted. So we have to iterate through each element of the scope and try and match from there. Two, match most of the deepest element. String.quoted wins over string. Makes sense. Rule three, rules one and two applied again to the scope selector when removing the deepest element in the case of a tie. Uh, text source string wins over source string. Okay, yeah, so like, these would be a tie up until here, but then this would win because there's no match for the other one. They also mentioned somewhere in here that the empty string, an empty scope selector will match all scopes with the lowest possible rank. So the root selector, which will just be foreground and background will be the empty scope selector. Uh, the way I represent it right now is actually wrong. I I assume like a special global style format, but we'll, we'll change that to be the empty scope. And that'll, I think that'll actually simplify how my lookup works. Well, we'll see with that. 
we will see. Um, yeah, so we have to handle the empty scope. And the other tricky part here is this last bit. For themes and preference items, the winner is undefined when multiple items use the same scope selector. So this is on a per property basis. So if one theme item sets the background to blue for string.quoted, and another theme item sets the foreground to white again for string.quoted, the result would be that the foreground was taken from the latter and the background was taken from the former. So this means that you have to consider, you have to do a lookup for the theme elements for each of the different properties. Uh, so you'll have a different a different lookup pattern for each of the which actually I think is not so bad. Oh, this is the song of the drop. Yes. yes. Uh, this one's a good one. I like this song. Um, yeah, so we'll have to do, we'll have to store, we'll have to make a selector engine for each property, is I think how I'm going to do it. And the nice thing about all of this is we can cache everything. <laughs> if we make a lookup against one selector type, it's always going to be the same value. There's no dynamic CSS. There's no, there's no like wacky stuff that like HTML has to deal with. We're just dealing with a static style sheet. So that's at least nice here. Uh, but one thing that I want to do so that it's easier to see what's going on here. Uh, I also didn't completely implement my actual pattern matching engine, but we'll we'll do that some other time. Uh, rule dot name. We'll just show quickly what. Uh, what rule is actually being matched here? Uh, just so it's a little bit easier for us to debug this. Yeah, so you can see now that uh, we match uh, all sorts of different things here, but we're not actually highlighting on those yet. <laughs> My favorite song, right, Catherine? I think Chet's, I think that one's Chat's favorite song. We should just play this on loop. Just Chat can have a drop over and over, but I think then everyone gets sick of it. Um, oh, I forgot, curly braces there. Oops. Thought it looked uh, a little too regular. Unfortunately, easy to forget the curly braces in uh, in F strings. Oh, there's two drops in the song. What? Wild. Uh, but yeah, you can see like markup dot deleted dot diff here, and we're not highlighting that yet because the way this theme works. RPS markup dot deleted deleted yeah so they only highlight on this string which is a prefix of this um so we need to actually implement our our selector engine here to make that work that's that is the plan for today oh, I keep getting emails uh oh <laughs> It's Conda Forge. It noticed that I uploaded pre-commit. Aha, this is gonna fail. Aha. Also, all of these depths need to change. Six is gone. This is gone. This is still right. This hasn't been here for a long time. What the fuck? It's super broken. Okay, let me log into the account. Uh, let's see, I think this is Dead Snake's issue bot. Dead Snake's issues bot. Uh, Thank you, Chaos Ninja. I did fix the, the chat. Uh, 
Ugh. You're a bot. Okay. We banned the bot. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I muted myself to type in the password and then clearly fucked that one up. Let me just fix this a little bit. Um, should get rid of this. And let's see. Just update this, because I think those versions have changed. Yeah, config thing needs to be greater than two. That's the wrong window. No. Maybe greater than two, greater than one. That looks right. Python has to be there. Six is gone. Futures is gone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, good. It's different by one because of this. Uh. Fix of dependencies. And then I need to edit the build so it doesn't try and build on Python 2. Uh, I don't know how to do that. Oh, I think I need to delete this file and this file. I'll let someone else do that. This needs to drop Python 2.7, but I don't know enough about Conda Forge to do that. Hopefully someone can help with that. Cool. And the funny thing is, because I commented here, I'm going to get an email from me, <laughs> to me, because uh, I have two accounts that manage this repository. Just the way things go. Oh, and my, my brother is picking up programming again, so I'm excited about that. He's, uh... He's signing up for a coding bootcamp and they're having him do some like pre bootcamp uh, spin up work. Learning, he's learning some stuff there. So, uh, excited, hope, hope, hoping that he does well. Um, I'm gonna copy this just to a dot old file because uh, I don't have this version control at all. This is mostly just like a file that I'm playing around with and I'll fix up later. Is he older or younger than you? He, I'm the oldest, so he's two years younger than I am. Let's see, we're not gonna change the rule structures. This is super janky. This is because MyPy doesn't support circular types, but it does support circular protocols. Um, and style is going to change. This is actually going to be what type? I think this is... Oh, we're gonna have the foreground backgrounds, bold and italic. So we're gonna have foreground, which is going to be a tuple of stir stirs. Uh, this being the rule or the, the scope selector and this being the value. And we're gonna have the same for background. We have one for bold, tuple, tuple, stir, bool. And then we have one for italic.
And our parsing is going to be similar. <laughs> Uncomment.sub. Gross. But we actually get rid of this type here. And these are actually all of the rules. And we'll build a rules engine around this type. So this will just be the data type. Uh, and we'll build something that implements caching around this composition there. So foreground rules equals, uh, well actually, we're gonna start with maps. Uh, one, two, th <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. So we'll start with the start with the really ugly. Uh, why does this line look so wrong? <laughs> Something about this line of code is just looks wrong. Oh, what what part of it looks looks wrong? It's right. It's just like it looks gross. Okay, so we're gonna start with black, white on black is our foregrounds and backgrounds. And we'll be updating this as we go. We're just making sure that there's a root style so that if the selectors fall through, they'll eventually match just this this empty selector. Um, bolds. Sorry, not be bold. We don't actually need this to be an error here. Oh fuck, these are supposed to be colors, not that. Not stirs, colors. Fine. Actually. RGB is int, so we can just do. This is probably more readable. No, but no one wants to read. Uh, uh, RGB in 250, 255, base 10. Double, double stir color. We're gonna start with dictionaries and then we'll serialize them to tuples later. And we'll do foreground, background. Um, yeah, so we already found this, this case in a different theme where there's no scope in the token mapping. So that sets the scope to the empty string. Uh, we also use this to get rid of the empty string scope in that one buggy theme. What's up, XD? How's it going? <clears throat> to do this needs a full selector engine. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Um, how's work? Work's fine. We did um, or this this week is calibrations week, so. Uh, Basically, all of the feedback that happened the previous weeks is now being collected, and groups of people discuss it and decide uh, ratings for people, um, which ends up affecting their like compensation and like promotions and stuff. And so yesterday, right? Today's Tuesday. Yeah. Yesterday, I did. I was part of the group that calibrated uh, T3s, T4s, and T5s for uh, developer infrastructure. So I, I did did that all day and holy shit was that <laughs> it's so much work it's uh 
my god, is it so much work? It was it was just like an exhausting amount of time spent in that. But uh, all all said and done, it was uh, not the worst. But it was a lot. It's it's a lot of stress because basically you spend. I think we spent. Let's see. We did nine until one, and we just barely finished on time. That's four. That's only four hours. I guess it wasn't that bad. It was basically four hours straight of just like going through every individual in the organization and like reading all about their feedback and like what their rating is and like whether that's appropriate for their level and like what they need to do to get to the next level and just like all of this, all this stuff. Um, and basically like discussing and judging people for, for four hours straight and like trying to be, I, I think, I think the hardest part, well, maybe not the hardest part. One of the hard parts is like recognizing and avoiding bias. This is very easy. There's there's all sorts of types of bias that are really easy traps to fall into. Like one one of the easiest traps to fall into. Um, and the one that the one that I struggle the most with, and I think others struggle with as well, is comparison bias. Um, so we, when judging an individual's performance, you must only consider that individual and not others that you could compare to that are similar individuals in the same either level or category or, or other things. And so um, when you talk about like, oh, like, I don't want to use names. I got to come up with a name that's not somebody. All, <laughs> a lot of my like filler names are also people that I work with. So um, let's say person one and person two worked on a project together. You can't like judge their performance relative to the other person's stuff so it's no it's it's kind of like it's to avoid stack ranking which totally makes sense doug one and doug three yeah when you're comparing you, you can't compare doug one and doug three you have to consider them individually and not and like make a conscious decision to not stack rank them which is really hard especially when like the the way we do uh, the way we do calibrations is we go level by level. So it's it's literally just like back to back of people that would be comparable. Um, but I don't know. I, I struggle with that. But there's also there's like we have like three three pages of definitions of different bias types and like making sure to like I think most of the other ones are pretty easy to avoid like uh, like sex, race, gender, etc. Like I said gender twice. <laughs> Great. Um, like, all, all of those I think are pretty easy to avoid, at least for me, because well, I'm not racist. <laughs> um, but there's also like recency bias. So like we're, we're calibrating over an entire half of work, so six months of work. And there's a, there's a pretty easy tendency to start or to consider someone more heavily based on the more recent things that they did. Um, like if, if they did something absolutely like ground like earth shattering in December, like it's you have to make like a conscious effort to like also consider their performance in the first five months of the of the half. It's it's a lot of work. <laughs> uh, so the people are competing against who they were yesterday, and not another person. Yeah, that's that's the goal. The endless server says you need to develop an algorithm for this. I wish it was more more uh, objective. I think that's why. I think that's why it's so hard for us to do it and like why it's so draining is it's a lot it's quite a lot of subjective work it's like it's it's judging a person on i mean honestly it's judging a person on three thousand characters explaining what they did and like that's pretty hard also the character limits are so restrictive on those like when i wrote my own feedback for myself i <laughs> I had to like cut out nouns and sentences just so I could like meet the character limit and like I'm usually a period space space kind of guy and I know that's wrong and like everyone's like oh you heathen that was back when there were typewriters there's no typewriters anymore you don't need to do that I just like how it looks just like let me be but anyway I had to delete all my period space spaces which was just like ugh, kill me I had to abbreviate years to save characters I had to uh, whenever I used the word and, I replaced it with a plus. Like, there was all this, like, min-maxing to get within the, the character limits, but... 
Oh, yeah, what a mess. But I'm glad it's pretty much done. But I think the process is pretty fair, which is is kind of like that, that's that's kind of the goal. So it's like um, it's a pretty pretty fair process. Also, there's a lot of different people in the room that have inputs on each of the individuals. And so usually you get a pretty good balance of like people that know and uh, can, can accurately calibrate people. And it's not just like the manager choosing what their level is, which been there before and that shit sucks. If your manager doesn't like you, <laughs> guess what? You're fucked. Rumble, rumble. <clears throat> if foreground in Your scope and scopes if foreground in token mapping settings Oh, you're one character too long. Uh... Actually, we'll call it a rule. Is that what they call it? What do they call it? Scope selectors. A scope selector is a pattern. What a selector then. Actually, wait, what do they call it? Theme coloring? Theme and preference items. It's a theme item. Theme item. I think that's one character shorter, at least. Cool. <laughs> nice. Uh, Nagler says, I didn't know double space after period was a thing. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a thing. Let's see. Double space after period. You learned to type on a typewriter before word processors became the norm. Two space after period were required and taught as correct. The extra space was needed to delineate the beginning of a new sentence because the space between words was uneven on a typewriter. Uh, nothing says over 40 like two space after a period. Aw, oh, fuck, man. Okay, boomer. <laughs> server says your baby definitely needs the auto tab after colon that's so annoying in nano <laughs> yeah but i'm kind of used to it now you know uh but yeah I, I get you totally get you what about the walrus operator it needs I, I think the endless server means like enter and or colon and then pressing enter not just colon but yeah that that's a, a potential feature to add but I, I still gotta get to basic feature parity before we can do fancy things like that. Uh, enhance! What are we zooming and enhancing? Ah, where's the italic? Ooh. I call it? Did I call it bulbs? <laughs> I did. Call it bulbs. <laughs> bulbs. 
Gold's scope equals true. Now, I wonder if there's underline in any of these themes. There's bold metallic. Oh, there is underline. Shit. Shit. I think there was one. Underline rules. Underline equals that. Uh, this should be LF. I guess you can't have a bold underline unless somehow it's applied twice. Underline, underline scope equals true. Are there any other font styles? Bold, bold, italic, italic, bold, underline. I think we wrapped around. I'm sure there's strike through, but I don't even know if we can make that work. <clears throat> make a special linter for dot text and Microsoft Word files. Force a double space after a period. <laughs> Greater than 40 lint. Damn. You should might as well just call a boomer lint at that point. Actually, that would probably make a good troll hacker news post. Boomer lint requires two spaces after a period. So, I think that's proper for the parsing. Now we need to stick all these in here. So space, night, death, death, not being there, foreground rules equals tuple foregrounds dot items. Background rules, old rules. Bolds dot items. Oh, we have an error here. Uh, italic rules. And then underline rules. Okay, that's our theme. Uh, what? My name K. What? I think this is supposed to be this. Style is undefined. Indeed. Indeed. We do actually still need a style type, even though I delete. Hmm. Is Pabby going to lint the boomer way by default? No. It's not going to do that. It's not going to care unless you add a linter that does that. Tuple. Foreground color. Background color. Old bool. Metallic bool. Underline bool. We don't have foreground anymore. Okay.
<sighs> so style is foreground is always not none. Get rid of that. File dot. Oh, interesting. These don't work like a proper stack. That's fine. <laughs> cool. We have bold italic. What's underline? I do this all the time. Uh, echo dash E. All the different colors. Oh, there is a strike through. Oh, there's double underline. Like four is underline. <laughs> Five is blink. <laughs> That's amazing. Cool. But anyway, here's some. Here's some. Uh, uh, what are they called? Highlights is. the undo for that though I'm gonna guess it's 24 M well, let's look at the wiki page for that key and the escape Spent a lot of time on this page underline off not singly or double underline I was right hit me 24 M yeah flink <laughs> I like this that this blinks. Does it actually is it spec for that? Slow blink. Rapid blink. 150 plus per minute. Well, that that one's not supported. <laughs> It'd just be like super flashy there. Reverse video. Oh, this is invert. An eight is a. Uh, Seal. I forget if this actually pastes properly. It does. Okay, so the text is there, you just can't see it. Uh, nine is strike through. Character's legible, but marked for deletion. Use that for like deprecation or whatever. Let's see. Text mate theme. Font style. Is that what it was called? Font style. I wonder if there's other ones. Hey, what's up, Kushimitama? Hello, hello. Going well. It is going well. Font style. Oh, well, it seems it only has these three choices. It has six standard properties. Wait, one, two, three, four. Wait, wait, what? Background, foreground, carrot selection, invisibles, and line highlight color. Uh, well, we won't be able to change selection, so. Or invisibles. Or the carrot. No, whatever. Don't care about those ones then. Oh. Yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> um. Typo desertion error. Amazing. Okay, so we need to make a uh, we may need to make a selector engine from the theme, and then figure out uh, what highlight should happen. Uh, how's Babby come along? Has it taken over Vim yet? 
It has a bunch of features. We're actually indirectly working on it right now. Uh, this is what, we're working on the, the styling and colors. And so I've started working on that here. Land is this patch. This the one that I didn't break. Oh no, this is the one that I broke. Let me unbreak that. Yeah, so this is what we're working on. We're kind of working on right now. This was my like first attempt at making it work, and it does work for simple themes, but it's completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Except for like doing doing this particular theme and this particular uh, programming language properly, uh, but we're we're expanding it so that it works more generically. Uh, so like this is the one that we're trying to get working right now. Dark VS. It kind of works, but also doesn't. Like these should get highlighted, but they're not there. If it wasn't completely wrong the first time, I'd be worried. <laughs> That's true. Uh. That's doing it the babby way though. True, true. Like the song too. Yeah, this one's a good one too. I agree. The one that goes Wee -ow! I like the way it does that. But yeah, so we're we're working on on this, and uh, the not old file is currently broken. <laughs> we haven't actually implemented it. Class selector engine will just be an object. And we need a cache. Um this will be a dict from tuple stir. To color. Do I actually need to make these caches explicit or can I use LRU cache? I think I can use LRU cache? Functions for these? Not gonna have ourselves. Duplicated wonderful code. It's fine. Everything's fine. We'll make it less duplicated in a bit, maybe. Under lint. Yeah, that's uh, that's the, that's the ace tilly way there. Type in lint all the time. I'm gonna say yes, but if it doesn't work, not take the credit. <laughs> yeah. So then we want to do depth select. And cache into each of these individually. Does it benefit us to cache this though? I think it does. So we should return style. Uh, actually, we can just implement this. Return style. Might be worth caching this anyway. Just so we don't call these functions over and over and over. Bold, self -self -bold. So now we have to implement that ranking rule thing that we have. 
Oh, this actually isn't selector, this is scope. the rubber off. It's gonna be a lot of noise. A lot of noise. We're not going to actually implement the grammar matching part properly right now. We're just working on the selector engine for today. We don't actually need to do the full proper thing there, so that's fine. File. default rule there for the unsiled stuff. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, this does break this, though. So that's annoying. We no longer have this token styles. That's fine. That theme demo was kind of cool, but also not super. Okay, let's throw some not implemented errors and then hack on this until it works. Syntax, you're right. Very right. Foreground style is assigned to, but not to. Interesting. Let's do this for now. Okay, so it should very much fail. Theme object has no select. All right, it's engine dot select. Uh, Kushimi Thomas says, Oh, dude, I had a question I wanted to get your opinion on. Say you had a script that needed to connect to a database or anything else that needs a password. What would be the most secure option for storing passwords? I usually stick with environment variables just for convenience, but haven't really used anything like password vaults or anything like that. <laughs> Chaps to the max says he's never going to answer your question. Uh, I'll try and answer it. Let's see. Um, it depends how, like, super enterprisey you want to be. Like, the best practice in, like, a a business is probably to use some sort of password vault and like your your two may not well really your only option is hashicarp vault there are other ones but they're kind of garbage um 
Like this would be your best bet if you're like actually building a full solution for this. Um, there's also one written by Lyft, but it is kind of shit and I would not suggest it called Confidant. Also ungoogleable because of the way that it's set up. <laughs> it's not even the first result for Googling it. Uh, but yeah, this is a secret keeper that Lyft wrote. It's not that great, but we use it. It works, I guess. It's just not the best. Uh, there's other secret stores similar to that, but honestly, if it's your own, just like, is advertising Lyft stuff, run. No, I'm, I'm saying it's not good. <laughs> Don't use it. Um, honestly, if it's your own, like, small personal project, you can pretty much get away with just environment variables and or, like, a JSON file that you make sure you don't check in. Uh, like for instance, the configuration for my bot that I use on GitHub or get use for Twitch chat. The way it works is on startup, it reads this JSON file, uh, which it just it just loads off disk and uh, reads the credentials into memory, and that works pretty well. But I mean, if somebody if somebody had access to my user account, they could read those credentials. But that's going to be true. I mean, the, the only way they would do that is uh, if they knew. That reminds me, I should change the mode. Just be slightly more. Oh, I already did. Cool. I'm already paranoid enough. Um, so this is mode 600, which means that only my user account can read this. My, my user account and root. Uh, so if I were in a multi-tenant system, someone else couldn't come along and snoop on this file and grab my credentials. I'm not going to cat this file, but I could, uh, but it would show my credentials. Uh, and that works well enough for me. It's not, it's of course like not the most scalable and not the most secure and like not how you would, uh, how you would put a, um, what am I saying? completely forgot what I was saying. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's not the most like safe solution. Can you put the link in chat? Yeah, sure. It's my bot. Do that. I can also put a link to HashiCorp's vault. There's my bot. Here's a vault. And uh, I can put Confidant. Uh, No, let's get her. <laughs> Why did it work when I searched this, but not lift? Understand. Here's the lift one, not that you want that. Uh, Kushimi Tom says, that's pretty much what I came up with from Googling as well. HashiCorp vault for prod projects dish and whatever doesn't put the password in Git for the rest. Yes, sounds great. <laughs> the password vault. Can you cat config.json? I want to see how you structured your JSON and Kappa. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not happening. Um, but I can show you like what it pull out of it, so you, you can see how it's structured. Where did the time go? Um, yeah, so it just... What? Oh, I just splat the keys directly into this mapping, so... It has these four keys. <clears throat> My <laughs> is asking real questions, right? First thing on Linux, sudo chmod trip7 home. That, uh, that can't be good. I can't read code, I can only read JSON. Um, let's see. Let me, let me show you a, a JSON form of it then. Oh, I'm gonna fuck up this command, it's gonna go really poorly. Um, oh, well, we can test it with something. Uh. 
actually don't need a cat here. Unexpected invalid reference backslash one. What do you mean? Do I need a dash P? Or is it dash R? Oh fuck, I. <laughs> oh, damn it. Oh, I just pissed on this file. <laughs> Dang it! Oh, I'm a dum dum. Alright. Uh, originally, I copied this file before. Uh, but this theme is actually a weird one. It has an include in the top. So there's this like include here. So I have to actually copy that out of this other file. Because I'm not going to implement includes today. That's too much work. Get rid of that. I happen to know it's hard tab, so we'll make it at least consistent. Dark defaults theme slash dark plus. If we remove the dash i, this should obfuscate the JSON. Am I brave enough to run this on my config? Am I, am I brave enough? <laughs> Should I press enter, guys? Uh, I don't want to have to edit the video. I don't want to rotate on my creds. This is going to be really shitty if I'm wrong. I'm pretty confident. What do you guys think? Send it? Move it over to another screen real quick. Do you believe in software? Not really. Alright, fuck it. We're doing it. Oh, perfect. <sighs> Man, that got my heart rate going. <laughs> uh, anyway, this is what the JSON looks like. <laughs> Oof. And I've gotten that excited in, in, in uh, zero depth. Yeah. <laughs> GG me, I guess. Oh, man. That was, that was scary. It's like we're playing, uh, what was that scary game? Any of the scary games. <laughs> Killing spree. Now, Clark, I missed it. What just happened? Oh, I catted my credentials, but with this fancy said regex that I wrote in one pass. Um, but I was I was very scared that I was going to le leak my credentials on screen. Um, I was doing something very dumb for for mostly for the lulls. <laughs> Anthony lives on the edge. It's true. <laughs> Catherine believed. Nice. <clears throat> His token is dot dot dot. Yeah, you got me, guys. Oh, I should have done, um, I should have done, like, stars, but the right length, but then I would need to write code for it. I don't think I can do that instead. Well, I could probably do it instead. I just don't know enough said to do it, is the thing. Okay, so now we need to actually implement this selector engine, which is the tough part. <clears throat> oh god, I hate this. It's gonna be really tough. Let's not get overwhelmed. Let's just do the simplest thing first. Simplest thing first is just to check that every... was well, to assert that the scope is just one in... Let's just do that. we can do is matches equals this. I wonder if it's, oh, it said it's undefined behavior of two match. Uh, two exactly match. 
Uh oh, but we're working with a mapping type. Well, it was originally a map, so it doesn't actually matter. Four. Scope color in self dot theme dot foreground rules. If uh oh, this is actually selector. If selector is equal to scope, scope zero. <laughs> This is super wrong, but it's going to probably work for diffs, and then I'll fix it after that. Chups to the max says, is green ham safe to eat? I don't eat ham anyway, so I'm gonna go with no. <laughs> so for an exact match, we're gonna put a one in there, I guess? Well, we'll just do color for now, because we don't need to weight these because we're not actually dealing with any uh, dotted path. If there's a dot, we need to check for a prefix, a dotted prefix. We can do that by chopping off the rightmost element. Which means we need to R partition. As we do this. Oh, sick! Otherwise, new scope. Recursion, what could go wrong? Everything, everything can go wrong always. Okay, let's see if we match this not. Pass the code. Let's see what happens if we copy and paste this. Uh. So we're gonna copy and paste a bunch of ugly code. It's gonna look gross. It's fine. Thing is okay. It's bad, I know. But we'll. We'll fix, we'll, we'll, we'll think of a way to fix it eventually. I just want to get it working and then, um, then we can go from there. Underline, italic, we're, we're practicing intentionally bad code <laughs> such that we can incrementally improve it. I like the structure, but I don't like the implement. Style reference for assignment. Should be engine. Oh, what? <laughs> what in the fuck? <laughs> what? Oh, what happened here? Uh, that's close. My right, cursive call is wrong. Old ground. Yeah, that's, that's what I wanted there. That's probably copy paste. You make, make mistakes like that. Well, then disc has changed. Fix this thing down here. Engine. Oh shit! 
It might actually be correct if I get rid of the... I change this to this. Uh, mostly correct. Or completely correct. Let's see what this was. Let's see what code looks like. Hey, I think it's right. Okay, so we have a somewhat. We've, we've implemented one part of the selector engine. Oh, that might actually be a good stopping point. Let's see if there's anything obvious we can clean up here. Other than this, this wacky sh Like we can do some stuff with dynamicism, dynamicism. Like the structure of all of these is always going to be the same. Like the same selector matching is always going to happen. So I could probably make a generic matcher. being a tuple of stir dot dot and rules will be a tuple of a tuple of stir and t <laughs> and i think this just returns t And then you make a type variable at the top. From typing import type bar. And T equals type bar T. Hey, what's up, guide VV? How's it going? on Babby today? Yes, I am. Working on syntax highlighting still. Uh, for selector color in rules. Otherwise, turn match scope. And this is wrong, but we will improve on it. And this should be able to just be return match scope scope self dot theme dot foreground rules let's see if that still looks fine and the odd syntax You're indeed correct computer okay does look good so that allows us to clean all this up so i like that What does the spread operator do? Oh, here? This isn't actually a spread operator. It's uh, an ellipsis, uh, which is a built-in uh, syntax construct in Python 3. Python 2, it's a syntax error, but there are places where you can get one, a reference to one. Well, you can just type ellipsis out, and that'll get you reference to ellipsis. But you can also use it as a syntax, 
in slices, but that's the only place you can use this syntax. You can use dot 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 there. See it printed the ellipsis that I passed in there. Uh, but in this case, in this particular case, there's two types of tuple type annotations. There's fixed width tuples. Uh, so like tuples, so tuple typel. Tuple stir, this is a one element tuple that contains a string as it's only one element. And this is a two element tuple that contains two strings. Uh, but the dot 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 means it contains any number of elements, but they're of this type. So this is saying that scope is, is a tuple of strings of any length. Um, and that's just the, the dot 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 just means of any length in this case. But yeah, it's, it's not, uh, it's not the JavaScript spread here. Uh, Chris Bill says, at that point, what's the difference between a list and array? Uh, tuples are immutable, smaller, and faster than lists. So, uh, and in this case, I need them to be immutable such that I can cache them. You can't cache a list because uh, you can modify it. And so the, the, the cacheability is broken there. So that's why I'm using tuples. Also, I tend to prefer tuples over lists when they're equivalent because of, because of the side and size and speed. Uh, differences there. That theme dot bold rules. Uh, we'll also need to do some special stuff like these scopes will not be strings. Or sorry, not the scopes. The the rules will not be strings here eventually. Like these will probably be some special data type. Uh, like especially for like this scope selector, like foo bar, this is a descendant selector. So it's actually like two functional units and like splitting that string over and over and over is gonna be kind of slow. Um, and so if we can split it once or like do the, do the actual parsing of the selector once, that should improve some performance of this selector engine when I'm done. And just because I want to show this theme stuff, we're gonna we're gonna mess with the theme a little bit so that we can try out some of these other highlighting types. So we can see like what bold looks like. diff.range.unified. If we do this, mark the test. We'll use dark vs hacks. Oh my goodness, dot diff dot range. Let's make a bold. Uh oh, we need to change it to the hex. I was like, why didn't it change? Oh, fuck. Why didn't it bold it?
what was it called? Meta diff range unified. Set yourselves a conditional breakpoint there. <laughs> Elf that theme that bold rules. Oh. We never wrote the bold rule in for some reason. No italic rules. No bold rules. No underline rules. Something's broken there. Theme item. Oh, it should be theme item settings. Dang it. There we go. Now I'm confident, so we're just going to delete the breakpoint. Hey, look, it's bold now. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. What else can we do? Meta.diff.index. And try italic thing that one. Alec. And we'll underline what do we have left? We don't have anything left. Nothing else to match. Really? We can add a comment into our patch. Oh wait, no we can't, because I haven't implemented that yet. Uh, can you pass two or all three to the same one? No, you can only pass one. That's just the way this syntax works. Oh, but we did italic that one. So let's change this to underline. Actually, we can just change one of the other ones to be... We'll make the header bold. We'll make this underlined. Underline. JSON decode error. Fucking JSON. Whoa, why did it lag so much? What did it lag on? Did you see that? Just like paused, but now it's fine. I don't understand. All right, let's get rid of the tag looking things. No, it's just so it's easier to debug. There's a scope debugger in Visual Studio Code, which makes it easier. But hey, look. Italic, underline, bold. Pretty cool. I like it. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of I have a lot of work to make this this match function work properly because it's. Very far from correct right now. Yeah, and I don't. I think I need to like actually build a test suite for this thing and like set it up in a separate repository and like actually hack on it independently there and work through that. But that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> so I'm not doing that tonight. I'm probably gonna. I'm probably gonna sign off right now. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy that we got this working now. Uh, let me make sure we didn't break the other one. Uh, one Dark Pro. That one still looks the same. Despite this this thing being weird. Um, pretty cool. I'm pretty, pretty happy with this so far. We implemented one part of the selector thing. Actually, let's see. Do we need these caches at all is the thing. I don't think we do because this is an immutable value. So that's hash is constant. This is an immutable value. So I think we can just cache this guy.
of having all these characters. Oh, no, we can't do that. We cannot do that. No. And the reason we can't do that is these mappings might be... Oh, wait. Yeah, we can. I was thinking, like, if you had the same scope and the same foreground rules as the same... Like, if your foreground rules and background rules were the same, you would return the same value from them. But we expect that anyway, so that's fine. I think we can do this. And we'll incur a function call for these. But we already incurred a function call anyway, so it's not, not that big a deal. And actually we could delete all these functions too, and just inline here. Yeah, let's just do that. Uh, let's see, self dot thing out the parentheses plus we need to capture this, then the parentheses and then dot star to the comma. We don't actually care about that. This will be match scope scope self dot theme dot this dot or underscore rules and currency and then a comma <laughs> really you didn't match anything self dot underscore oh i have an escape currency this Sick. Sick. <laughs> Why do I even have a class then? Oh, because I guess. Huh. Still work? Cool. Anyway, we're going to stop there. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to fiddle with this and not really, not really make any progress, but do some like useless refactorings like that. But anyway, uh, pretty happy with that. Let me do my spiel, and then we'll, there's, if there's enough people online, we'll send you guys to another channel. Uh, but yeah, if you liked what you saw, I upload all of my stream content to YouTube, well, all my programming streams. I haven't uploaded my Pokemon streams. I recorded them, but I don't know that I'll ever upload them, but anyway, so I upload my programming stuff to YouTube. You can check that out here. That's youtube.com slash Anthony Writes Code. I usually stream on Saturdays at 11 a.m. Today was kind of an unplanned stream, which sometimes happens at 6 p.m. on either Tuesday, Wednesday, or Friday. Catherine says, 99, hope you get a good night's rest. Yeah, I'm hoping I get a good night's rest too. Uh, but yeah, I usually stream on Saturdays at 11 a.m. I announce that in two places. One of those is twitter.com slash codewithanthony. Usually post something like, hey, I'll be streaming in however much time, um, which is what I did today where I did the things that I said I was going to do. Um, I actually accomplished both the things I said I was going to do, which is uh, doesn't always happen for me. But yeah, usually announce on Twitter. I also announce on Discord. Yeah, don't upload your Pokemon stuff. Too much Sonya calling. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's a good meme, though. I, 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 I think it's pretty funny. It's kind of dumb, but I think it's pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, I also announce on Discord, which I just left the link in the chat. You guys are free to join, talk about programming and all sorts of other stuff there. But yeah, thank you all for stopping by, and let me go find someone to raid.